what are the main challenges for the power system today in South Africa? So we see three main challenges for South Africa. Uh, number one, UCLF, which is unplanned capability, cap capability loss factor. And that is essentially the crippling coal fleet we have today, the majority of where our power comes from. Uh, the picture here is maybe something you might recognize. This is, uh, let me get my pointer out here, laser pointer. This is Majuba coal silo that broke down in a couple of months or if not yet last year sometime. Um, and I just heard yesterday there was another six units that came offline um, from the ESCOM system. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of that going future as these stations get even older. The other challenge, renewable energy, uh, not only from a grid side, grid scale perspective, but even back down to your solar water geysers um, at, at a domestic level. The more renewables, the more intermittency is introduced onto the power system, the greater the challenge to balance that renewable energy. And then finally, the ever-present peak demand. That's, that's something that's always been a challenge and will continue to be a challenge as demand increases. In South Africa, that peak spike is particularly high and, and particularly difficult to reach, uh, considering our generation mix. So that requires technology that needs extremely fast ramp rates to meet that peak. And what happens is in power systems, you get this anomaly called a duck curve effect. And basically, that's what happens there is as you get more solar on the power system, it's not the solar is not really addressing the evening peak, but it's making the difference between your midday requirements and your evening peak requirements even so much bigger from a dispatchability perspective. So, with these three challenges, um, at the moment, ESCOM is pretty much reliant on their diesel open cycle gas turbines to, to manage these three challenges. And when they run out of diesel, well, we all know what happens then. We all have the lights coming out uh, at our homes, which is, is frustrating for all. So what the system really needs is something to replace the diesel OCGT, something far more cheaper, obviously. Um, we can all appreciate that power from diesel is extremely expensive, but it needs to be flexible capacity as well. So now, if we think about technology options, uh, flexible technology options, is there's really, in our view, three types of dominant technologies that appear uh, and lives for the time being park pump storage and hydro because those are really good flexible energy providers but we don't see them forming part of this RMPPP program. So options we see ice, turbines and batteries and we've taken a, a view of putting a podium position for each of these technologies under each of these dispatch regimes. So for mid-merit, efficiency is important. ICE is the winner. Uh, it's far more efficient than open cycle turbines, for example. Uh, in fact, engines have the highest open cycle efficiency available out there. The number one engines there, ramp rate. Again, engines have an extremely high fast ramp rate. Um, ramp, uh, ramp cost and time, um, again, engines, they have zero costs according to, to their ramping up and down, and they also have one of the lowest turn down ratios um, compared to other technologies, has low as 10% uh, for some engines. Um, the startup costs, again, engines, zero startup costs for engines compared to other technologies, turbines, where there is a cost incurred, whether that's in the form of extra maintenance or startup fuels. Now, the only one that's different is this instantaneous reserve. Uh, and this is where you see batteries coming into the fall. Uh, because the timeframes are so short, it's practically impossible for a generator to provide a significant amount of instantaneous reserve within a 10 second time frame. But that's exactly the kind of time frame that batteries uh, are, are most efficient at. So a lot of comparisons here, um, maybe a lot of technical information. I want to simplify the discussion though a little bit and, and make it a little bit easier to understand. So if we just 
think about the turbines and the engines, it's it's essentially the same as a jumbo jet or your car. Um, the fundamentals are the same, i.e. you get fuel, you intake fuel, you squeeze the fuel, you burn the fuel, and you push the fuel out. Just these technologies do it in a slightly different way. Um, but I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine in the good old days when we used to fly around, um, what would happen? You'd go to the airport, uh, you'd board the plane, buy your ticket, board the plane, sit and you'd, you'd probably look out the window and, and see the turbine slowly spinning. And uh, then you'd uh, taxi to the end of the runway, uh, you'd hear the turbines crank up, uh, then you'd take off and you'd reach a cruising altitude and a cruising speed, and, and there you sit pretty much for the duration of the flight for a couple of hours. And then you come down and land, and that's it. That's how turbines operate, that's how they like to be operated. Engines, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Now, I, I don't have this car, maybe some of you do, but uh, uh, my old Skadonk, what I do in the morning, I, I turn on the car, it turns on immediately, most cases. Uh, I reverse, stop, close the gate, turn, accelerate off, go to the robot, slow down. Uh, if you're in a more modern car, every time you hit the robot, your, your engine will turn off. It will turn on automatically as you pull off. And you do this 10, 20, 30 times every day on your way to work, and you repeat it on the way back from work. It's exactly the same for power plants. It is just a different scale. So as you get the flexibility in your car with the engine, so, do you, so too do you get that flexibility from a power plant perspective. It's a simple analogy, but a very much accurate analogy. Turbines, they turn on, they like to be left on, and they turn off. But engines, there is no limit to that flexibility. So that, that's something just to keep in mind for these technologies. Now, these technologies, these characteristics, uh, do translate into a tangible cost benefit for the power plant. Remember, that's obviously what we want at the end of the day. We want to have the lowest cost of energy for our power plant. 